<laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Have you ever looked at your pay slip and thought, my God, if I didn't have to pay taxes, I would be so rich, right? Well, if you don't pay your taxes, that's tax evasion and that's a crime. But there are ways to avoid having taxes to pay in the first place. Say what now? I'm Kalila Reynolds and it's time for another episode of Money Mondays JA. Money Mondays JA is brought to you by Proven Wealth. Visit provenwealth.com to speak to an investment advisor today and follow We Are Proven on social media and Bulwark Insurance Agency. Looking for affordable insurance? Visit bulwarkja.com. Follow them on social media at official bulwarkja. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click the bell icon so that you can be notified whenever there's a new video. Also, subscribe to my newsletter at kalilorunnels.com newsletter, where you can read a transcript of this episode. So let's talk about paying taxes. Most of us hate it, but it does serve a purpose. Taxes pay for schools and roads and salaries for police officers, nurses, doctors, and teachers, among other things. That's why not paying your taxes is a crime. Now, for many of us, the words tax avoidance and tax evasion sound pretty much the same, but the devil is in the details because tax avoidance is legal, but tax evasion isn't. So tax avoidance is the use of legal methods to minimize the amount of income tax that you or your business owes. What's interesting about tax avoidance is that it's pretty easy to do and you've probably already done it. Do you currently contribute to a pension plan? On top of pension plans generally being tax exempt, contributions made to an approved superannuation fund or an approved retirement scheme are deducted before income tax is applied. Are you someone who regularly donates to charity? Well, making donations to a registered charitable organization, note I said registered charitable organization, can also be deducted from your salary before taxes. Tax avoidance is the art of tax planning, taking advantage of as many legitimate tax deductions and tax credits as possible. The country that you pay taxes to will determine the tax deductions that are available to you. In St. Lucia, you can get tax deductions for contributions to an approved registered home ownership savings plan, RHOSP, and also life insurance premiums. In Trinidad and Tobago, a tax deduction is available for tertiary education expenses. There's also a tax credit available to venture capital investors. And in Barbados, your contributions to a registered trade union are also tax deductible. So depending on where you live in the Caribbean, you may be able to benefit from the CARICOM Double Taxation Agreement. According to this agreement, the income of CARICOM nationals is subject to taxation in the country where that income is earned. For example, if you are a Jamaican national working in Trinidad, your income is only taxable in Trinidad. This is especially beneficial to CARICOM nationals who are working in another CARICOM country with a lower tax regime than their home country. And the best part is you're only paying taxes in your host country. You won't be paying double taxes to both your home country and host country. On a larger scale, we see businesses benefiting from this agreement through the use of tax havens. Tax havens, also known as offshore financial centers, are countries that offer very low or no taxes. In the Caribbean, St. Lucia's tax regime has made it a popular site for international business companies, IBCs. These are companies that are established in tax havens and are controlled by non-residents, people who don't live there. IBCs incorporated before January 2019 were able to choose between tax exemption from income tax or to pay income tax at a rate of just 1%. As a signatory to the double taxation agreement, these businesses would only be subject to St. Lucian tax laws. So can you imagine registering your business and only having to pay 1% in taxes and you can't be taxed anywhere else? Sounds like a sweet deal, right? So Proven, Cygnus, and First Rock 
are some of the listed companies in Jamaica that are registered in St. Lucia and have taken advantage of this. Now, to be honest, I did look into this for myself when I was incorporating KRM last year, because I figured if this is how the rich people do it, well, I want to be like them, right? But there were a couple of reasons that this didn't quite make sense for KRM after I looked into it. And the biggest one was that I basically missed the boat. Changes to St. Lucia's tax laws, which came into effect just last month, July 1, 2020, 20, 2021. So IPCs incorporated after January 2019 are no longer able to opt to be tax exempt or pay taxes at 1%. Womp, womp, womp. You know, CARICOM heads of government kind of you know, raised an issue about it. So instead, all IBCs will be deemed resident companies and subject to income tax at a rate of 30% on income earned in St. Lucia. However, that specific amendment won't pose a problem for companies that don't actually have operations there. So there's a lot more to that, and we definitely need to have a deeper conversation on the changes to St. Lucia's IBC laws, but I just raised it to point out that this is one of the ways that businesses have legally avoided taxes. Now, people are also able to make use of tax havens by setting up shell companies. A shell company is a body corporate created in a tax haven. Unlike an IBC that will provide goods or services to a country, although it is registered in another country, a shell company only exists on paper with no employees, no office, and providing no goods or services. They're known as shell companies because similar to an empty shell, there's nothing inside, right? A shell company can have uh, different uses, which may constitute tax avoidance or tax evasion. In 2016, it made headlines when it came to light that many Jamaican politicians had registered companies in St. Lucia, most notably then leader of the opposition and now Prime Minister Andrew Holness. So I covered this story when I was working at Nationwide News Network. Many questions were being asked about Mr. Holness's big house being built at the time in Beverly Hills. And it was revealed that a company called Admat Incorporated, registered in St. Lucia, had purchased the property in 2011. Now, Admat is named after the Holness sons, Adam and Matthew. So at the time, attorney at law Patrick Bailey, who had signed the transfer documents as a witness, told me at NNN that Admat was set up as a trust for the Holness boys. And he made the point that Mr. Holness was not attempting to evade taxes. It was different. It was tax avoidance. So this is not an effort to evade taxes? No, 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 no. You know, remember the law says you can avoid taxes, and it is legal to evade taxes, but it is quite lawful to avoid taxes, which is a different thing. Yeah, so that was one of the things that really piqued my interest about this whole issue of tax avoidance versus tax evasion. Individuals or businesses may use shell companies to purchase or transfer assets which legally would belong to the company and not its stakeholders. It would also be the responsibility of the company to pay any taxes on those assets. So owning a shell company is not inherently illegal, but it depends on what the company is used for. Buying property through a shell company and lowering your personal tax liability isn't a crime. However, using that shell company to hide assets and evade taxes, that is a crime. On the other hand, tax evasion is an illegal activity in which a person or entity deliberately avoids paying a true tax liability. Tax evasion can take many forms, such as not paying your taxes or underpaying your taxes by lying about your income. For example, if you have a very lucrative side hustle that meets the tax threshold, but you haven't reported that income and haven't paid taxes on it, you're committing tax evasion, which is a crime. Now, recently, cryptocurrency has been considered a potential avenue for tax evasion. It's a largely unregulated sector, and for many countries, cryptocurrency is still a legal gray area, especially in determining whether it should incur taxes in the first place. Furthermore, most governments don't have a system to keep track of who owns cryptocurrency or how much income has been earned from it. And let's face it, there aren't many people willing to report their crypto income just to pay taxes on it. Okay, so let's get this straight for a minute. Tax avoidance is reducing how much taxes you owe and tax evasion is having taxes and not paying them. 
Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, not exactly, because in real life it gets complicated because the same methods used to avoid taxes can also be used to evade them. So if you're unsure, best to consult a licensed financial advisor or a tax consultant. Well, that's it for this episode of Money Mondays, J.A. Now here's what's coming up on Taking Stock. On your mark, get set, and they're off. Okay, baby sleeping star, can't really bang this to heart like I want to right now, but you know that watching our athletes at the Olympic Games just brings so much pride and joy to our lives. But did you know that athletes don't get paid to participate in the Olympics? So how do they make money then? And what happens after they retire? We're talking the business side of the Olympics with head of Leap Marketing and athlete brand manager Tanya Lee Perkins and Olympic bronze medalist Warren Weir. The medals don't come with a cash prize? No. Zero dollars and zero cents. And that's why you need to get out there and ensure that you perform well so that you're racing to the heart and that you can make money, money. And later, the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. Seprod's results are out. The company delivered revenue of $19.8 billion, which is an increase of $1.2 billion um, for the corresponding uh, period in 2020. In the U.S., people are flocking to dollar stores for value items, and all those dollars are adding up. And the last time I checked it, it was around $100.54. The P.E. is around 16 Point one six times and the return on equity is 21%. So those indicators show that the stock is performing. And the IMF's global growth projections are out. Well, the IMF has not really done a major revision to what they said in April. So I mean, pretty much it has remained unchanged. So they're looking at global growth at 6% for 2021 and 4.9% in 2022, which is pretty much the same as they had it in April. Now don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and sign up for my newsletter at kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter, where you can read a full transcript of this episode. You can click the link in the description box below. Also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Kalila Ray and on Facebook at Kalila Reynolds Media. If you're into podcasts, find us on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And we're now on Cool 97 FM as well. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Let's get this money. Money Mondays JA was brought to you by Proven Wealth. Visit provenwealth.com to speak to an investment advisor today and follow We Are Proven on social media and Bulwark Insurance Agency. Looking for affordable insurance? Visit bulwarkja.com. Follow them on social media at official bulwarkja.